What's up guys, ViPrepV here, and today we have the Diatone GT-R349. And this thing has gotten quite a rap for itself in other reviews. Um, I think Stu over at UAV Futures has reviewed it, and it was probably one of the fastest drones that they ever flew on there when they did the uh, speed gun. Um, I can't say for certain if that is very accurate, since they were, you know, we don't know if they were flying out of the wind or whatnot, but... Pretty much what this is going to be all about is this drone and going over all the components, even a flight, and then pretty much giving you guys what my opinion is on the Diatone R349. Now this has been sent by Banggood, so Banggood was very kind to go ahead and send this over to me for review. So let's go ahead and talk about all the components and everything that it comes with. So right off the bat, pretty much what it comes with is it comes with actually three of these canopies. It comes with one in black one in white, which you see on here right now, and then the clear one it comes with. Um, you only see two because I already destroyed one. Um, it also comes with some spare screws and spare parts, which is really nice. Comes with three battery straps, one actually two longer ones, and then two shorter ones. So if you want to use 3S batteries or if they're not big, uh, you can use the shorter one. The longer one would be more for 4S, and like I'm using some 850 milliamp batteries with this thing, and the batteries are pretty big. I probably would not suggest using that big of a battery because it does kind of change the flight performance. If you're around 650 milliamps, that's probably pretty much the perfect um, battery for this type of uh, three inch drone here. Um, we also have, it also came with some battery pads and whatnot that I stuck onto the bottom. It also came with an extra XT30 along with a buzzer that you can hook up as well if you want to. Um, I use the motor beat for the motors, so I don't even have to worry about setting that up. Um, it does come with the, the dipole antenna for the VTX. Um, the VTX is actually a Runcam TX200, and it does do um, up to 200 milliwatts, and it is a 48-channel receiver with a race band. So that's really nice. Um, it is really tiny, too, if you look in there. It's just kind of just barely up there on there with this uh, panel. Um, then we also have the um, frame itself, which I believe it's a diatone frame. It has... Um, carbon fiber and it actually is beveled edges on the side and it's really original design I don't really think it's copying anything just the way it looks um, it looks really really nice the canopies are actually not 3d printed they're actually injected molded and it actually comes with three of them so if you do destroy one uh, you do have two other ones to have and plus you probably can buy some extra ones um, the camera itself is a run cam micro swift and really decent camera on here um, and then we also have the motors, which are 1408 4000 kV motors. Um, these are the Mamba motors. And they're they're really, really smooth and they're really notchy. I, I really kind of dig these. They're really nice. Um, then we also have the flight controller, which is the Mamba stack. And it has the ESC as well. Um, the Mamba stack is an F4 processor. Has the MPU 6000. Has UARTs on it and everything else. And then we also have the ESC, which is a 20 amp ESC and it handles 25 amp burst. And it also goes up to uh, 4S capabilities there. So really nice. And when I got this thing, I was really impressed with the build quality. Um, if you look at the, all the soldering joints and everything and how everything is laid out, it looked really, really clean. Did not have any complaints on how this thing was all wired up. So quality, I'll definitely give this thing probably a nine out of 10. Um, it's just really, really built really nicely. Regarding the firmware on it, and it does run Betaflight 3.5.1. Um, it does come already tuned from the uh, from Diatone, so you don't have to worry about doing any tuning with PIDs or anything like that. Um, I did have to enable air mode, and I also had to enable it to be AK and AK on the gyro and the PID loop. Um, it just makes it fly so much better. Um, I think default it came uh, 8K, 4K. So change that up, make it 8K, 8K. Make sure that uh, it is running D-Shot 600 and um, you have air mode enabled so you can do those tricks and stuff in the air. You don't have to worry about falling out of the sky. Um, but that's pretty much um, it for a bench breakdown on the drone itself. I do have an XM Plus receiver squished in there and uh, I did put run the uh, antennas on the arms right here so they're really protected from the props. And speaking of the props, it does come with some Gemfan 3028 props, which I actually really dig. I like these props a lot. I actually crashed them up. So I'm going to see how they do um, with me flying it around with these props on. And then if they are really wobbly, I probably will put some different props on it. 
All right, so let's go ahead and get a weight on the Diatonar 349. And let's put this on the scales. Let's make sure I'm not, I think there's a prop under there. And we can go ahead and get this thing. All right, so it looks like we got 131 grams. That's with the receiver and everything. And then if we add some props to it, we're at about, well, let's put those props on there, right? So 136 grams. So that is definitely below 250 grams. And if you add a battery on top of that, maybe 100 grams for a battery, um, you're definitely below the 250 gram limit if that's a limitation in your country. So let's go ahead and get to the field and see how this thing performs. All right, guys, we're at the field. As you can see, this is a really nice day. It's like 80 degrees and uh, this is a good spot. I love this spot. It's nice and open. No one bothers you here. Um, I'm going to be pretty much doing a flight on 4S with the Diatone R349. I did charge some 3S packs, but I figured it's not even worth to go ahead and try, you know show that because it's just a little less powerful than the 4S. So to save time on the review, let's go ahead and just do uh, 4S. And then uh, we can go ahead and uh, give you my final thoughts on what I think of it. So here we go. All right, guys, we're at the back of the bench uh, after that flight. Hope you guys enjoyed it. But let's go ahead and go over what my thoughts are on the Diatone R349 Rabbit. And first things, let's go ahead and start off with the good things. So first things first, um, it flies exceptionally well. Um, it's really smooth. It is really actually pretty fast. So I'll actually give Stu over at U of A Futures, you know, a thumbs up. It is pretty fast. Does it go as fast as they said? I don't know. I don't have a speed gun, but it is, it does move. I mean, I bet you this thing can contend with some five inch quads. Guarantee it. Um, but as well as the build quality on this thing, it is top notch. I, I really, really, really like how everything, like the solder and everything is just perfect, how they have everything laid out. It's nice and tight. As you see, mine is not as great as it was before because I have smashed this thing up and smashed it good. Um, but going over pretty much everything here, um, 
Now you do get this actually really cool canopy, which I did go over in the first part of the video. Um, and that is a big plus too. It's not 3D printed, it's not TPU, which maybe they should have probably went with a TPU piece because starting off with the bads that, you know, I have to suggest since I'm a reviewer is that this thing is pretty fragile, especially in a front end collision. Um, it's not really so much the plastic, it's actually this front clip right here. It actually clips onto these little parts where it screws on. And if you crash, it's gonna unclip and usually it, there's like these little, um, I guess they're nuts, you can call them in there. And they just kind of break off and then you just lose them. And then you have to replace the canopy with the two spares you have. So that's one caveat that we do have about, you know, the R349. Um, some other things that I did also have some issues with. Now, if you're running rapid fire, rapid fire is very uh, specific on how it gets its feed and its signal from the camera and also the VTX and how that all plays out. Um, so I was actually having some lock-in issues and that's actually what caused me to crash when I first started flying this thing because it was unlocked, had no video, it was just scrolling around and um, I crashed. So as a result of that, pretty much I did destroy the VTX, I just bent it in half. And I had to go ahead and put a VT, I had a TBS Nano that I had laying around in my bin. Uh, so I went and put that in there and that helped out a little bit. So I also had some issues as well. I went into beta flight and switched it from auto to PAL or NTSC. I forget which one I did and that did help me get that lock on my rapid fire because it needs to have no if it's using PAL or NTSC. So I did change that and it did actually help a lot. Um, I also did as well, as you can see, I removed the capacitor I had on the flight controller, which I'm not really sure why it was on the flight controller itself, as you see back here. Um, I actually put a low um, 330 microfarad capacitor here on the back, and, and I connected that directly to the power line on the ESC, uh, so that will clear up any noise that this camera and this VTX is getting. And that right there, that pretty much cleared it all up, so I can say that Right now, my video is perfect, and I'm able to fly this thing around with my rapid fire on rapid fire mode one, and it's great. Um, now, if that kind of turns you off to it, they actually do have a TBS version of this as well, which is about 20 bucks or so more. I'm actually not sure. I'll leave a link to the TBS version as well as this version down below too. And they actually do have an HD version as well that uses like a, I believe a turtle or the whatever the run cam one is that's able to record HD footage right off the camera. Um, the only thing I don't really care about those cameras with the HD footage is that it does bring some latency to the actual FPV feed. And I actually, I'm not a crazy racer or anything like that, but I definitely notice it and I hate it. So that's one thing to notice as well if you ever pick up one of those uh, cameras or those FPV cameras with the HD quality recording. Now they do have a new one that actually just came out has two cameras on it, which makes it separate. That actually might be not too bad. And if you're able to let me gut this out right here and have the two cameras sticking out, that actually might work even better. But um, other than that, this thing is definitely really awesome. Um, if it wasn't ra running rapid fire, it probably would be actually, I wouldn't have to even mention it because I wouldn't be, even know about it. But since I do run rapid fire, um, that is one caveat we do have regarding the R349 and its camera signal. But other than that, like I said, it is definitely, um, I definitely like how it flies. It flies freaking perfect, honestly. Um, so I'll have to probably give this quad probably, you know, an 8 out of 10 um, if I had to recommend it today. Just those two minus points just because of, you know, the issue with rapid fire which can be fixed with either replacing the camera with more of a better camera. Even though this is a run cam Swift, which usually they're pretty good. So I'm kind of thinking that's how, how the, the capacitor was laid out as well as the setting the setting up of on um, beta flight. So I don't think it's really too much the camera. I think it's just how it was set up from the factory. But other than that, like I said, this is the R349. I will leave links down to this, the HD version as well as the TBS version if you're interested in helping me out. Um, it doesn't cost you guys any more using those affiliate links. It helps the channel out tremendously. And I will see you guys in another video. Peace.